In lesson 113, we'll be covering logarithms and anti-logarithms. Now, logarithms, those have to deal with the exponents of bases. And let's just review some of our rules for exponents, like the product rule. If we had 10 cubed times 10 to the fifth, we know that that would just be equal to 10 to the 3 plus 5 or 10 to the 8. Likewise, if we had 10 to the fifth divided by 10 to the third, we know that that would be equal to 10 to the 5 minus 3 or 10 squared. And then if we had this, 10 to the third to the fifth power, we know that we would multiply those two exponents and we would end up with 10 to the 15th. And so the thing to remember about logarithms is what I have written in red down there. Logarithm means exponent. I'll probably say that 20 or 30 times in this lesson. Logarithm means exponent. That's a really important thing to remember. So the application of logarithms, that's what we're going to be studying here. Don't worry about the word logarithm. It's just a strange looking different word. It's basically just a way to describe an exponent. Now you'll need your scientific or graphing calculator to do this lesson. So if you don't have that out, you'll need to go get that. So pause the CD and go get that. Now to describe logarithms and to understand how to work those on a calculator, let's just use a number like 1,000. Now we could write 1,000 like this, 10 to the third, with a base of 10 and raised to the third power. So 1,000 with a base of 10, it has an exponent or a logarithm of 3. So just like when we're doing our basic trigonometry function, sine, cosine, and tangent, when we say sine of 30 degrees, we're not saying multiply 30 degrees by sine. We can write log base 10, we put a little subscript like that, of 1,000 equals 3. So we're not saying log base 10 times 1,000. That's just notation to tell us that the logarithm of 1,000 is 3. And so the log, base 10 log of 1,000 equals 3. Another way to think about that is what I have written there in parentheses. The base 10 exponent of 1,000 equals 3. Now your scientific or graphing calculator is programmed to find the base 10 logarithm or exponent for any number. Most graphing calculators, the way you figure out the logarithm for a number is you just hit the log key, L-O-G, type in your number. In this case, let's just type in a thousand, and then you hit enter. And it's usually spelled out, the word enter, log 1,000, enter. If you have a graphing calculator, you do that, you should get three as an answer after you hit enter. A scientific calculator, usually you type in the number first, then you find the LOG key and you hit that and it will spit the value out for you. You don't have to hit the equal sign, it'll just automatically produce the number. Now don't go past this point until you can figure out how to calculate the logarithm of 1000 on your calculator. You should get a 3 for an answer. If you get a 3, then you know you did it correctly. And I'm not saying if you have a graphing calculator, it's going to work just like I explained. Or if you have a scientific calculator, that's how you'll do it. It just depends on your calculator. You may need to get your calculator's user manual out to figure out how to use it. But somewhere on the keyboard, if it's a scientific calculator, you'll find that LOG button. And so your calculator is designed to find the base 10 logarithm for any number. Now, if you typed in a negative number, you couldn't find the exponent for that. I mean, just think about it. If you were trying to find the base 10 logarithm of negative 1,000, you're trying to find 10 to the what would equal negative 1,000. Well, there's nothing that you could raise or no exponent that you could have with a base of 10 that would equal negative 1,000. I mean, you can try it. You can put log of negative 1,000 in your calculator and it will give you an error. 
in the same way it won't give you a value if you type in log of zero because there's ten to the there's nothing that you could raise as an exponent with a base of ten that would equal zero. So you can only find the logarithm or the exponent, the base ten exponent for positive real numbers. Now there's another logarithm base that your calculator does besides log base 10 and that's called the natural logarithm and look over here at the bottom left you would say log base e e is this number that's equal to like 2.718 it's an irrational number it goes on forever that it just seems like a strange number but it's a very important number in lots of different applications in biology and chemistry and physics calculus we won't go into why it's important right now but just understand that that is an important base and so that's the LN key on your calculator there might be an LN that means log to the base of E and so find that button on your calculator and once you do this do the natural log of 10 on your calculator and you should get about 2.3 that's just rounded to one decimal place and so what that means is that's the exponent for a base of E in other words E to about the 2.3 power equals 10 and if you're not sure about that, prove it to yourself. E, like I said, is about 2.718. So you could say 2.718 to the 2.3 power. If you do that, you get about 9.97. So it's almost 10. Of course, we rounded those, so we won't get exactly 10 for an answer. So your calculator does base 10 logarithms and natural logarithms or base E logarithms. Let's do some practice problems. Look at practice problem A. I want you to solve for x. Well, you would just simplify that by taking the natural logarithm of 47. So I'm using a graphing calculator. And so I'll say, I'll hit the natural log button, the ln button, hit 47, and enter. And so that would just equal 3.85. We can just round these to two decimal places. So we would just say 3.85. Now, remember what that means. That's the exponent for a base of E. So just over here to the right, let's just write down E to the 3.85 equals 47. And just to help us think about what we're doing here. Logarithm, when we take the logarithm of a number, we're finding its exponent for that base. If it's a base E logarithm, then the base is E. If it's a base 10 logarithm, then the base is a 10. In B, we have e to the x equals 123. And so we want to find that exponent. Well, logarithm means exponent. So if we take the logarithm of 123, we'll know what the exponent is. And we need the natural logarithm so that we have a base of e for that exponent. So all you do is just do natural logarithm of 123. And so that would equal 4.812. And so we can rewrite this as e to the 4.81. And so there we can see x equals 4.81. So that's our answer. In c, x equals log of 5,000. So what is x equal to? Well, do the base 10 log. When you see log like that, that just means base 10 logarithm. ln means the natural logarithm or the base e logarithm. log, you assume base 10 logarithm. Of course, there's other logarithm bases that you can do. You could do a log base 2, base 3, base 4. But your calculator only does base 10 and base e logarithms. Those are the two most commonly used ones. And so log of 5,000, you just hit LOG on your calculator. If it's a scientific calculator like mine, you just do log 5,000, and that equals about 3.70. OK, and then we can just think about that. That means that 10 
to the 3.70 equals 5,000. And you could try that. You could prove that to yourself. Just do that on your calculator. Do 10 raised to the 3.7 power, and I get 5,011.87. So, of course, I rounded that exponent result. That's why it's not quite 5,000, but I can prove to myself that it does equal 5,000, or is about that value. And let's do one more in D. 10 to the X equals 7. So how do we find out what X is? Well, we see a base of 10 raised to the power of X. So that means we can take the logarithm of 7, and that will tell us what the exponent is of 7 to a base of 10. And so take LOG 7, and you get about 0.845. And so I'll do this one to three decimal places, 0 0.845. And so that means that 10 to the x equals 10 to the 0 0.845. Because when you take the logarithm of a number, logarithm of that number means its exponent to whatever base you're working with. And therefore, x equals 0 0.845. So when we find the logarithm of a number, we're finding the exponent of that number raised to, or the base raised to that exponent that would equal that number. So when we take the log of 7, we're finding the exponent for a base of 10 that would equal 7. When we take the log of 5,000, we're finding the exponent of a base 10 value that would equal 5,000. We take the natural log of 123. We're finding the exponent for a base of E, or 2.718, that would equal 123. Now let's talk about what an anti-logarithm is. Well, we just discussed that logarithm means exponent of a number. An anti-logarithm is just basically the reverse. So if logarithm means exponent of a number, anti-logarithm, that means the number that belongs to an exponent. So if we had a 2 and we wanted to know what the base 10 anti-logarithm of 2 was, that would just be 10 to the 2 equals 100. And so we might see it written anti-log of 2, or we might see it log to the minus 1 of 2 as well. Now if we wanted to know the anti-logarithm to the base e for an exponent 2, that would just be e squared. And we would write that natural log to the minus 1 of 2. That equals e squared. Log to the minus 1 of 2 equals 10 squared. So anti-logarithm, that means the number that belongs to an exponent. So let's see if we can figure out the inverse log and the inverse natural log. I'm using the word inverse instead of saying anti-log. See if we can figure those out on our calculators. So a graphing calculator, like the one I use, it's a TI-83+. Plus. Instead of hitting the log key, you would hit the second key first, then LOG, then type in 10, or not 10, type in 2. If we're wanting to find the inverse log of 2, we type in a 2, then hit the enter button. And we would get a value back of 100. Scientific calculators, usually you'll type in the number first, then you'll hit your second or maybe a shift key, then hit the log button and it should give you a value of 100. You don't have to hit the enter key. Again though, your calculators may not work exactly like I just said. You'll have to figure out for yourself what they do. Natural log or the anti-natural log or inverse natural log, you figure that out the same way. Graphing calculator, you hit second, LN, type in two, hit the enter and you'd get a value that was equal to e squared. It wouldn't say e squared, but it's about 7.39.
Now, usually on your calculators, like we're having to hit the second button on these or the shift button, usually that button has a yellow color or a blue color or some color to it. And then right above the button, it'll have some symbol in that same color. And you know that those are the ones that that particular button does when you hit the shift key first. And so you might notice, like above the log key, if you see the the little symbol above that that's color coded with your second or your shift key for the inverse log it may be like a little 10 to the X and then above the inverse natural log it might say an E to the X well that's what you're doing right you're typing in the exponent because anti logarithm that means the number that belongs to an exponent so you're putting in the value for that exponent the answer you get is the base 10 raised to that exponent that you typed in. Then if you took the logarithm of that result, you'd get back to the exponent. So look at practice problem E. Why don't you try to do that one? Log of x equals 2.6. So to find x, what we can think of is x is equal to the inverse log Remember, we don't even think of this as multiplication or anything. We just write it inverse log like that with a minus 1 power of 2.6. And so re we remember that anti-logarithm or inverse logarithm means the number that belongs to an exponent. And so logarithm of a number equals the exponent. Logarithm of x equals that exponent for a base of 10. x equals 10 to the 2.6 therefore and so to figure that out on a graphing calculator you would just hit second log of 2.6 and that equals about 398.11 let's do one more let's find the natural log of x equal to 1.4 negative 1.45 so we just think, well, x, that would equal inverse natural log of negative 1.45. Now, we just got done talking about in the first part of this lesson that we can't take the logarithm of a negative number. But just think about what this means. This is the inverse logarithm. This is not the logarithm. So what we're trying to find here is e to the negative 1.45. And that's the same thing as 1 over e to the 1.45, right? So we can do that. We can take the nat inverse log or the inverse natural log of a negative number. And so all you do, if you're doing a graphing calculator, you just hit second LN and then type your negative sign in 1.45. Remember, don't use the subtraction symbol for a negative sign. Find the negative sign button and you would end up with a 0.23 for an answer. And so I'll put that down at the bottom here. 0 0.23 is what that would equal. So when we find the anti-logarithm or inverse logarithm, that means we're finding the number that belongs to that particular exponent for either a base of e or a base of 10. Inverse logarithm, we're finding the number that goes with an exponent for a base of 10 inverse natural log, we're finding the number that goes with an exponent of a base of e. And just remember, e is just a symbol that represents the number 2.718, just like pi that represents 3.14. We do that a lot of times with numbers that we use a lot in algebra. We represent them with a symbol instead of writing the number out every single time. Okay, well that's all for lesson 113.